What's up, guys? So happy Friday. And as always, let's go to the standard disclosures. This is for entertainment purposes only. Nothing should be taken as legal or financial advice. Do your own research. Make your own decisions when it comes to investing or anything of that nature. You can lose money. You can make money as well. So disclosure as well. We own one share of GameStop. We also now have sold off all of our Sundial. Uh, we no longer have Sundial. We'll talk about that a little bit more in the you know future. Let's go GameStop first because it's the big story of the week as always. And uh, we had a very interesting week. We lost some money on GameStop. You know we went from 67.73 down to this 51, uh, actually 52.31 at the close here. So overall, not terrible. Like going down about about 25% is bad, but it's not terrible. It could have been a lot worse. And what we've seen this week is it looks like there's a huge resistance level at the $50 mark. So you can see it almost never went under $50. As soon as it went down to 48, 47, it just like pushed right back up for the most part in this week. So it seems like there's just a ton of support at this $50 mark which is uh, good moving forward. That might be a benchmark. And also it tells you if it breaks down, if it goes down to like $45, then you could be in trouble. We also have today, this is the day chart. We started off at 52, dropped down to that 49, and then it made a nice recovery throughout the rest of the day, actually ending up for the day in a slight profit here. So uh, we have a little bit of momentum going our way on the GameStop front. It looks like we might have seen the bottom potentially. We still have to get through next week. Next week is a big week as well. We talked about this in another video. There's a lot of puts that are in the money and that could push this down. So there's a lot of potential for a negative gamma squeeze. And so this is why we talked about before that uh, we were probably going to see a downward trend like this for two weeks or so. And that the buyback point of GameStop where you might want to just jump back on the rocket ship is around the 22nd, 23rd, somewhere around this time. Uh, maybe even going out, maybe it's the first and second of next month of, uh, what is it, March? So somewhere around this area could be the buyback, like the very bottom of GameStop, in my opinion. Again, educational purposes, don't have any crystal ball or anything like that, but that's what I'm thinking. That's where I might actually jump back in and put some serious money into GameStop because there still is a lot of upward potential. On the 18th, we actually do have a very big thing coming. We have the like government investigation of GameStop. And there was a lot of news today that broke out about GameStop's um, you know, like Robinhood's subpoena. So if you Google Robinhood, you'll probably see uh, what we're talking about here. People are, are definitely angry at Robinhood. Hearing will include Robinhood and Robinhood CEO. So a lot of information, they're set to testify at Capitol Hill next Thursday. Um, you know, they also have a death that has been sued. So, you know, someone died because trading and things, you know, people go crazy when they lose lots of money and it breeds depression and death. Uh, so they're blaming Robin Hood for that and so forth. A lot of lawsuits, if you know, there's probably like 100 lawsuits now would be my guess on Robin Hood. So, yeah, Robinhood is going to have a very, very crazy week. Um, as always, I do recommend that you do take your money off of Robinhood if possible. So that's also another reason why GameStop might actually have a rebound is because it takes about uh, 10 days to get your money off of Robinhood if you're doing a transfer. So and it could take a little bit longer since there's a lot more people doing transfers. And it could be, you know, 10 business days as well. So if a lot of people initiate transfers around like the 29th, 28th, when all this stuff went down in January, uh, two weeks from there would be roughly right around the 15th and 16th. So next week they would have you know access to their accounts and all their stocks. Or you could also just liquidate and then also just take your money out. But Robinhood has a thing where you can only take fifty thousand dollars out per day. So if someone has you know a lot of money or made a lot of money on a GameStop, then it could take some time to take all your money out of this of uh, Robinhood. Highly, rec highly recommend going to Weeble. Weeble, uh, link down below, it will give you uh, four free stocks when you put down $100 into your accounts. And that's roughly going to be about a $30 uh, value in stocks. You can get a little bit more, you can get a little bit less, but roughly it's about a $30 value. So when you put down $100 on Weeble, uh, you will get some free stocks. It does take a little bit of time to get those free stocks, but hey, free money. So check out that link down below. That is my referral link. Helps out the channel, helps support the channel. And as always, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel for more information. 
So Robin Hood is just, ah, I hate Robin Hood. And everyone that was in GameStop should hate Robin Hood because they stopped all the forward momentum that we had. And there's rumors that, you know, there's going to be some kind of settlement or some suit and that Robin Hood will end up being bankrupt and then pay out like, you know, $10 to everyone that had a share of GameStop or something like that. So some stupid thing like that, which it's probably going to happen because uh, you remember like the credit breaches that happened long, long ago and like Xperia got, you know, breached. And then now we have this settlement where everyone gets like $5 or something. We're still waiting on our checks over here for, uh, you know, for having our security breach and this big government company, Xperia, like maybe not government company, but, you know, big, big company that does a lot of stuff to protect your credit, supposedly. So, yeah, when these lawsuits happen and it affects, you know, hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of people, then, yeah, your settlement, your fee gets down to like nothing. And then the lawyers just eat up all the money as well. So overall, even if Robinhood does end up going bankrupt, supposedly your account is safe. Uh, you will not be losing your account. It will just be transferred over to a different brokerage. So that's what we've researched, what we found out about that. So it's not the end of the world if Robinhood does go bankrupt, according to some just random research I did on the web. Uh, but still, I highly recommend getting off Robinhood. I know Robinhood is easy to use, and it definitely, you know, it's nice, it's clean, it's simple. It's a great app, but the company behind it sucks. That's just the bottom line. So, I, I I mean, I'm still on Robinhood. I have a lot of money. I have options on there as well, which prevents me from transferring my account. So there's just a lot of uh, a lot of bullshit that has to go on at this. Eventually, we will get out of Robinhood. It will be fully in Weeble. So, yeah, but it just it takes time, guys. So I, I can see a lot of people being stuck on Robinhood for a little bit because, yeah, it takes time and it's, it's a pain in the ass to change. But... Ah, uh, let's see. So next week, I I don't know, man. Will we get down to forty dollars? That is a good question, and I think there's a good case that we could get down to forty dollars in GameStop next week. We could also just hover around this fifty dollar mark. And either one of those scenarios wouldn't be terrible, in my opinion, for the stock. Yes, it does suck that we go down to like forty bucks, but it just it's it's gonna load up again. So like, if we look at the month, we can see we have a zoots and then down. But we're going to have another up. We're going to have another skyrocketing up. There's still a lot of shorts uh, in GameStop. And a lot of people are bleeding money on the short side because they have to pay interest for shorting the stock. So when they want to close, they're going to push the stock back up. Uh, this, uh, in part, was due to shorts closing and then also Elon Musk talking about GameStop on Twitter. So the big thing, uh, what it looks like was the big catalyst was Elon Musk tweeting, you know, GameStonk. And uh, linking the Wall Street bets. That actually surged like millions of people to Wall Street bets. And they jumped on board. One of the interesting things with Wall Street bets though. And this leads into the other stock, Sundial. Is that Wall Street bets now has about 9 million subscribers. You don't have to be a subscriber to actually jump onto Wall Street bets. To check out, read the Reddit. And see what people are talking about. Uh, to, you can even post as well. You don't have to be a subscriber to post. But they have 9 million subscribers on the Reddit. So that's a huge number. When you think about it, not everyone's going to subscribe. They have a lot more uh, viewers than that. Any any given moment, if we look at Wall Street Bets Reddit, you'll see that there's probably about 40,000 people actively online on the subreddit right now. And you can check this out. Like, 9 million, and there's 135,000 right now actively on. This is what this means right here. So this is how many people are, are actively logged in reading the sites or posting or whatever, and are engaging with the subreddit. So literally 135,000 people are here right now at this moment. That's insane, guys. That's a lot of people. And they're talking a lot about pump and dump schemes and things like that. Like what's happening now is a lot of the new investors are, are seeing like a stock pop up and then it just bloop. And then it blip down. So it looks very pumpy and dumpy. But what it's coming out is, is people are starting to decipher this. The, the new investors that join Wall Street Bets are more, uh, I guess, risk adverse is the right word. Where they're, they're not used to getting you know 100% on their money or 200% on their money. They're not YOLOing their life savings. They're more cautious investors. And they're like, they're happy with 10% or 20%. They're really ecstatic. They're like, oh my God, I made 10%. Oh my God, I made 20%. Because they're coming from like, you know, Apple and AT&T and, you know, places like that where they, they get like, you know, 2% a day or they lose 2% a day where they're like, wow, this is, this, 
this 10% stuff is crazy. Like I, I normally get 10% a year on my investments, but now I'm getting 10% a day. This is insane. So once the stock like goes up is the theory, like 10% or 20%, these guys are like, Hey, oh, yep, time to pull the register. Let's cha-ching, cha-ching. Let's make that money. We got our 20% today. That's good profit. Let's go. So they're a new type of investor in the Wall Street Bets community, and they actually out, outweigh the old investors. So the old investors were about 2 million people, and they were more YOLO degenerate gamblers. We're just like, yeah, we're going for freaking 10,000%. We're going to try to hit the moon, and uh, yeah, that's it. We're just we're YOLOing. We're taking 1,000. We're going to turn it into a million. That's our goal. We're going you know, ride or die. These new investors are like, we're taking our thousand and we're going to turn it into 2000 and we're going to call it quits. We're like, we're good. You know, we're going to do that over and over again. We're going to take these small little gains. So that's what the new investors are doing. And that's what we saw in Sundial actually. So Sundial still had a lot of peak media and it was still going strong on the, on Wednesday. But on Friday, we went up to like this all time high of 300 and or no, Thursday went up to $3.60. $3.60 is the all-time high on Thursday, it looks like, on the chart here. I believe it went a little bit higher in the early um, or pre-markets. So overall, it was it was, it was was astronomically high. People bought in for, you know, $280, $260 uh, the prior day. And then it jumped up like 50% almost. Like it was a huge increase. Uh, so they were like, yep, ring the register, take the profits. And then you saw that sudden dive down. And it had a nice, a huge roller coaster going on with the sundial. And uh, more people then decided like, oh, yeah, we're going to take some profits. We're going to take some profits. We're going to cash out some. Uh, and they're not, they're not riding the wave. They're not trying to make a, a huge spike. They're not trying to do a GameStop here. They're just taking their nice little 25, 30% profits and, and, you know, calling it a day. And as that happens, the momentum dies down. And we see now that the momentum died down a little bit. And then as a Friday came up, more people are taking profits. And as more people, you have the negative momentum of people are like, oh, it looks like we're cashing out. It looks like it's game's over. So let's get out of this. So more people all cash out and it drops down to 225. And then you have the, the more degenerate gamblers. They're like, no, 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 dude, we're not done. We're not done, guys. Like we're still going. And so they pushed it back up to 295, it looks like here on this chart. And then, you know, again, more people was taking some profit because it's like, hey, we got in. We're, we're making our 20% or 25%. We're good. And it dipped down to like 190. But you can see it's still doing fairly well, all things considered. Like Sundial has not really, you know, cratered completely. If you look back, uh, you know, earlier in the week, it was a dollar on Monday. Tuesday, it was 150. Uh, now we're still hovering around this $2 mark. So like it hasn't died completely. And it looks like the $2 might be a you know, a point of, of strong resistance. You can see we stayed around this $2 mark the entire Friday almost. A uh, very, very, you know, healthy resistance point right there. And it looks like that that's the kind of the new normal and what people are, are deciphering on Wall Street Bets is that we're going to see smaller gains here and there. And so it's going to look kind of pumpy and dumpy. It's going to look more like roller coaster stuff. But it's just these new investors that are coming in that are happy. They're ecstatic with 50% gains in one day. I mean, that's a great gain when you really think about like, hey, I used to get 10% a year. When now they're getting 50% in a day, that's an insane amount of money to these people. So it's like you have to understand that Wall Street Bets has completely changed over the course of these you know, three, four weeks. We have a grand new population here. And it's more uh, about taking small gains, I guess, rather than YOLOing going for the home, the grand slam. We're taking these singles and these doubles. And uh, occasionally we'll take a home run here. But we're not going for the grand slam anymore. These people are more like, yeah, we just want some small, consistent money. So now you have to be really more careful about like YOLOing and call options. And like if something is moving up. You have to really notice that it's going to move up and it's probably going to move back down very, very quickly. So take those things with, uh, you know, information. Check out the Reddit. I don't think Sundial is going to completely die. I don't think it's going to go back down to a dollar. I think it's definitely uh, staying over this dollar mark. And yeah, like it could be very interesting to watch in the future. Now it's a lot harder to predict where the Sundial will go, for example. A lot of the other uh, cannabis weed stocks did tank and crater. So you have that, you have the, the lack of momentum, and then you have the mainstream media saying that, they, hey, the stocks are over, cannabis is, cra is cratered, it's dead. So you have the negative press now. Like, the news cycle is always about one day behind what's going on in actually the stocks, because they have to report on what, you know, what has happened 
Uh, they're not really forward thinking. And also the news will report be like, hey, these are like Canadian companies for the, the, the weed stocks. They don't have very much, you know, exposure to American market. So it's not really a good play. Overall, though, I think the Reddit community is just looking for stocks that are undervalued and that have, uh, you know, good potential for upside. So we saw this in some pharmaceuticals as well. Some SPACs also seen a lot of movement and they're just like, hey, if the stock has a chance to go, you know, 2x, we can do it. Let's do it. Let's jump on board. They don't want to deal with these stocks that are like, yeah, we're going to go up like, you know, 10% in a year. They don't want that. They want the chance to 2x or 3x their money. And then when they do, now the smarter people are going to be getting out and taking some profits. Like, you know, at least cover your initial buy-in. So that's the thing. Uh, if we were to buy in, so we bought in here at 267 was our buy-in price for Sundial. Um, and we sold around like 225. We panic sold around like that bottom, that crater. Uh, was not good. We definitely lost money on the sundial trade and yeah, but like we panicked, you know, and like now I'm like, I'm terrified to go back in because don't know where it's going. Uh, I, I thought it was more of a sure thing that I was going to go up and then when it down, it was like, oh, but again, we have to readjust. I mean, if you did buy in at this $1 or 160, or if you go back a month, if you bought in at like 80 cents, you know, you've made a ton of money. You might as well shave off, hedge off your initial investment. If you put in a thousand dollars, take that thousand dollars back out and then let the, let the rest of the thing ride. If you believe in the company, which that means you can't lose money because if you've taken your initial investment and you've cashed that out. So if you put a thousand in and it turned into 3000, cash out a thousand of that and then let your 2000 ride and you can't lose at that point. So like, that's a great way to do it. That's a lot of, a lot of smarter people do that is they take out their initial investment and then they let the rest of it ride if they believe in the company. If, if you thought that, for example, the sundial was a, you know, quote unquote pump and dump scheme where they're just like, all right, we're going to try and get rich quick. Uh, and we don't really believe in the company. Then yeah, you would take out your total investment and be like, all right, we went up. We're good. We're out of here. But if you actually believed in the company, yeah, take out your profits and then let the rest ride is a great, uh, you know, great strategy in my opinion. And that's kind of what we did with GameStop a little bit. We, uh, we, you know, got some profits there, took some profits and then hedged off, sold off here and there. So yeah, overall, just try and be smart. Do your research, check things out, make sure that you uh, know what kind of like Reddit in the communities are doing. Like, you know, there's Twitter, there's TikTok, there's Reddit, there's YouTube, there's all these communities and they all have a tremendous amount of power now. And they're realizing that. So you have to be aware of these communities and you have to be aware of what people are saying about stocks. It's, you know, it's not a good thing if no one's talking about your stock. If no one's talking about your stock, it's not a good thing. You you want some people to be excited and some people to be you know happy about your stocks that you're doing. If no one is talking about it, eh, that's a bad sign in my opinion. All right, guys, I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching as always. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys later.